Poring over a map is a fascinating way of making the time pass. And what could be more thrilling than planning your summer trip with the help of an atlas? Especially if your goal is the magic land of the midnight sun. Europe's northern extremity is situated very close to the pole, on the same latitude as Point Barrow in Alaska. And the journey to this Arctic outpost is a long one. From Bergen, your port of embarkation for the cruise along the coast, the distance to North Cape is as far as a voyage to Iceland or Ireland or to the south of France. Here our holiday makers are seen en route, enjoying the glorious sunshine as their ship sails through smooth water along narrow protected channels, screened by islands and skerries from the assaults of the open sea. The express steamers that serve this glorious stretch of coast carry mail, and this means penetrating into a host of little-known fjords and creeks. Our journey to the North Cape goes through sheltered water practically all the way. Rocks, cliffs and mountains have been twisted into weird and wonderful shapes along this awe-inspiring coast, and round every island, peak and skerry, cluster legends and myths as old as time. Crossing the Arctic Circle, our travellers receive the time-honoured polar certificate, signed by Jack Frost himself. to remain below deck with so much absorbing scenery to drink in at every stage of the cruise. Snow lingers all the year round on these majestic peaks of Arctic Norway. Summer in northern Norway is unexpectedly warm, with light frocks the order of the day, and a day, don't forget, lasts for 24 hours up here in midsummer, whenever the boat has an hour or two loading or unloading, sightseeing excursions are arranged to local beauty spots. We are on a coast where fishing has centuries-old traditions and the kids know all the tricks of this exciting calling. Fishermen unloading the day's catch provide a common sight at many of our ports of call. And we too get a chance to try our hand at landing one of the many fishes that are bound off this coast, while the guide tells us of the cod fisheries that take place here every year in February and March, in the Low Fountains, with thousands of boats engaged in one of man's most stirring encounters with the forces of nature. on the Lofoten banks finds its way to South America, Italy and Spain. And today, as in the Middle Ages, the harvest of the sea provides a livelihood for a race of men who have inherited the courage and endurance of their Viking forefathers. It's thanks to the Gulf Stream that the climate up here in the north is not as polar as it is at the same latitude in other parts of the world. Here we have a crop of hay being gathered 150 miles north of the Arctic Circle.
no horse quite like a Norwegian fjord pony. Blue of eye and blonde of mane, this sturdy creature, which boasts an Arab strain imported by the Vikings, has made countless friends. In the short, hectic summer months, fruit and berries ripen at an astonishing pace and have a flavour and succulence unknown in more southern climes. Putting in to remote little spots off the beaten track is half the charm of cruising up the coast of Norway, chasing the midnight sun. In far distant Tromsø, we found a polar bear in the high street, but alas, it was a stuffed one. From Trumza, trappers and sealers set off for the pack ice and Spitsbergen to return each year with costly furs. Many of these make splendid souvenirs. We were talking of buying a polar bear rug for Aunt Alice, but finally we compromised on a doll for Cousin Betty. mountain moors in this part of Norway are the home of the Laps, an ancient nomadic race. Like the redskins, they live in wigwams. The reindeer is their source of wealth and livelihood. These soft-eyed, sure-footed animals supply the Laps with food, clothing and transport. And a man's wealth is measured in head of reindeer. Bird lovers will recognize some of the many species which nest on the cliffs of this rocky coast. Puffins, kittiwakes, razorbills and various kinds of gull are among the commonest members of these glamorous colonies. Rather like a parrot is the puffin, a sociable sort of chap who, like most of the inhabitants of North Norway, is awfully fond of a fish dinner. of orcs was probably discussing the fishing prospects for the day. This young 
fellow, looks a bit shaky on his pins, but you make the trip next year when he's got his wings and he'll put on a real aerial display for you. Near the end of our journey, we look in at Hammerfest, which claims to be the world's most northerly town. And finally, when we reach North Cape, Europe's northernmost outpost, the coastal steamer drops anchor, and a launch lands passengers at the foot of the cliff. foot to the top, but the climb is well worth the effort. Perhaps our most abiding and thrilling memory was the midnight sun low on the horizon, shedding an aura of colour whose richness and variety can only inadequately be recaptured by the camera.